Welcome back to The Edge. We're at it again, driving home the SEO audit, what it is and why it is so important, and how you use it for the best wins for your clients and your team. We've got a great show here with Aleda Solis, fresh out of SMXL19 in Milan, talking about how to maximize growth with those audits today on The Edge. Your weekly digital marketing trends with industry trend-setting guests. You're listening and watching Edge of the Web. Winners of Best Podcast from the Content Marketing Institute for 2017. Here and see more at edgeofthewebradio.com. Now, here's your host, Aaron Sparks. So, uh, hey, this is Edge of the Web Radio, episode 332, and I'm your host, Aaron Sparks. And hey, we, every week, we actually bring you amazing industry guests and chat about trending digital marketing news and unpack topics about digital marketing to our digital marketing audience. Uh, be sure to check out all the recent shows over at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. We're cranking out podcasts, videocasts, blogs, and transcripts on each show. So if you miss something, jump in over there and deep dive with each show. Uh, Edge of the Web is actually brought to you by Site Strategic, the title sponsor of the show. Site Strategic is a pioneer in the agile digital marketing realm. Their core specialties of technical SEO, conversion optimization, and omni-channel uh, media marketing. Uh Agile marketing is iterative, results-based marketing that works. So if you're interested in what that means for you and what they can do for you, give them a call at 877-SEO4WEB or 877-736-4932. All right, going to toss it over. Jacob is in the, in the production booth. He's a studio creative director, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. How are you doing? Good afternoon. I'm doing well. You're doing well. Yep. You sure? I am. My eye has healed. PSA, <laughs> wear safety glasses when you run a weed whacker. Absolutely. Acorns flying into your eyeball will scratch your cornea. Ouch. Make things blurry. Literally. Um, <laughs> The 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 the, the animated gifts in Slack in our corporate Slack, uh, <laughs> it was one to behold. But dude, yeah, I mean, I mean, those eyes are precious, right? You got to protect yeah, them. Yeah, I know. It wasn't much fun, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're glad that you're that you're uh, taking care of that, and uh, glad to have you in the seat there. Certainly appreciate uh, your hard work on a regular basis. We need to make some notes here uh, on the edge, uh, just to quickly update you know, every everything. Uh, we're really geared into SEO audits and. We're Reporting, and we've been doing that for a number of shows. And we have a great interview. Uh, we had a great interview with Andy Drinkwater over at IQ SEO, and we went over his 209 point checklist. So we're excited after that long interview. Yeah, it was really long, but we enjoyed it greatly uh, to actually bring Andy back around again and do a live SEO audit. Yes, live. We'll be live on this Wednesday, November 13th at noon Eastern on YouTube. So you want to Set your reminders, jump in there. Uh, we picked a submission, and we're going to be going over the site uh, factors on YouTube Live. So set that reminder at the have a new lunch with us, you know, uh, with the Edge team and, and the drink water, and we'll dissect our willing participant domain. It would be loads of fun, and uh, we'll certainly take your comments on the show while we're doing it. And another note, we just want to run through some of the upcoming guests are going to be on the show. Bruce Clay is going to be on November 18th. Kim Scott is returning to the show uh, with an upgrade of her book on November 24th. Elizabeth Marson is going to be joining us December 22nd. Talia Wolf is on uh, the show December 9th. And Robert Rose is joining us at the end of the year on our December 16th show. And we're thinking about having one more show, but we're keeping it secret for right now. Uh, make sure you set a reminder on YouTube to get notified whenever we're live with those shows. And if you're actually interested in being a guest, drop us a line over at edgeofthewebradio.com and we'll be happy to oblige. Um, so with all that, we would like to introduce our guest for the day, Alita Solis. Alita, how are you doing today? Very good, very good. Thank you. Thank you for having me again. More so than excited. welcome. That's right. It's the second time for Alita. And uh, I tell you what, uh, you're doing an incredible job in uh, in SEO and being an advocate of, of good clarity in SEO audits and most especially international SEO. You're, you're a specialist among specialists in that field. Oh, thank you very much. That means a lot. <laughs> no, no problem. So you just got back from Milan and over at SMXL 19. Give us a tidbit. What, what some juice over there? Some fun things that you had going on? Yes, yes. It was a, it was a very fun conference indeed. Uh, um, especially well, because Italy is so amazing. So you, all, all delicious food, also great conference food. You cannot go wrong there. Uh, but but yes, there was a, a really mix of 
interesting topics from um, technical SEO, Dave Sunimano sharing um, a lot of assessments regarding uh, task automations, uh, SEO task automations with oh. with app scripts, and and then uh, more of of uh, social and PPC also sessions, and then many other. Uh, I think it was Don who's, who also shared about how to develop an SEO strategy from scratch. Amazing, like 200 slides is crazy. Oh, so th there was so much uh, content from all of the different side of SEO and also uh, not, on, uh, not only SEO, uh, but, but also paid and, and, and social. So I, it was mm -hmm. a very well-rounded uh, type of, of conference indeed. And, nice. and I think this is the first conference that there was more tweets and social chatter after hours than actually going on at the event because there are some pictures regularly of, of the drinking that was going on, the wonderful food and the dining experiences that you guys had over there. Well, you know what, coincidentally, it's because uh, it was Gianluca's 50th birthday. Yeah. So we took the opportunity, and you know, 50s are the new 30s, or so we say, thankfully, I'm not I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that, absolutely, yes. absolutely. <laughs> But but we you know we made it happen. We we needed to have a good time with him, so we went out with him uh, one of the nights. Very cool. Well, that's great, and, and it's certainly it's great to be able to be at those conferences. So if you're if you're a digital marketer in different spaces, you got to join these conferences. Try it out at least once because the connections you make are fantastic. But the learning that's going on and and such well developed slides. I mean, this is this is this mm -hmm. is top-notch stuff and well thought through content and uh, you're, you learn so much at these spaces so we certainly uh, recommend going to the SMXs on a regular basis well uh, Alita like it's again this is not your first rodeo you know that we go into news each and every show so with that are you ready to dive into some digital marketing news let's go I'm gonna do what God put Ron Burgundy on this earth to do have salon quality hair and read the news this week's trending topics. All right, so hot, hot, hot off the presses over at Search Engine Journal is an article from Lily Ray, uh, our friend and yours. I tell you what, she's huge in the EAT space, expertise, authority, and trust. And she rolled out an article debunking bad SEO information, 10 common EAT myths busted. Within the past year, EAT has become a major topic of discussion within the SEO industry, particularly as it relates to organic traffic performance changes due to the core algorithm change from Google beginning in August 2018. Lily actually went through a 10-point debunking of myths about uh, EAT. So, uh, Aleda, did you catch that article? I did, I did. And, well, Lily is amazing. I, 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 I know her personally, and she's indeed so knowledgeable about this topic. And I, did, I think that she did an amazing job summarizing the top misconceptions that mm -hmm. exist nowadays. And people also over obsessing, I have to say, <laughs> with the topics a little bit, and thinking that it is even like a replacement of of source of of the the right. Google quality algorithm, things like that. So uh, yeah, give a little bit of, of 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 reasoning regarding how we should look at at it, how we can realistically use it, and and for what it's for. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you're absolutely right, and she broke it down for us to easily eat and consume. There's the pun for the day. All right, so check it out. Number one, eat is not an algorithm. Uh, it's, it's not an algorithm of its own, according to Gary Ish. In a recent QA uh, uh, session over at PubCon, Google has a collection of millions of tiny algorithms that work in unison to spit out a ranking score. Many of these baby algorithms look for signals in pages of content that can be conceptualized as EAT. So it's not an algorithm. There is no EAT score. Number two. Um, Number three, EAT is not a direct ranking factor. Expertise, authoritative, and trustworthiness are not individual ranking factors. Right there, uh, Alita, that right there has been one of the biggest misconceptions. Everybody is looking at an EAT score and that it's how do I – how do I optimize my EAT? And that's a, com complete, a complete misconception, right? Well, this is the thing, right? I, I think it's, it's more of – what Google wants to achieve with, with uh, the, 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 the results, right? They want to provide the best type of experience mm -hmm. to users. So when they do these benchmarks, when they do this, this sort of validations with their, their quality evaluators, they right. need to find some references and, 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 and criteria to 
facilitate their job in a way that is not because I, I, I can't imagine that uh, this is people who are not highly technical also, right? Right, right? And how do they try to replicate the best type of experience that they want to provide to users? So they need to come up with this type of, of, of out, like references. Right, right, to right. Consideration when, when assess, assessing the, the, the quality of a, of, of a page. So indeed, the expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness, these are type of characteristics that we should all try to aim with our content, even not taking Google or SEO into consideration. Absolutely. Oh, right. This, this, this are type of characteristics that I want my content to have to sell anything for sure. No, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's how to translate those evaluators. And we just locked on to this as, I mean, their uh, SEOs are looking at this as the equivalent of a BERT and come on people. This is, this is conceptualization. This is how to evaluate mm -hmm. and it's all niche. It's all in, in respect to one's own industry as well. Uh, number four, eat is not something that every site owner needs to be heavily focused on. Google is explicit in its quality, quality guidelines that the level of eat expected to on a given website depends on the topics presented on that website and the extent to which this content is YMYL in nature. Now, if you don't know that, we have another couple of YMYL shows uh, your money, your life, uh, algorithm changes from August. Point being is that if a website is about a hobby, such as photographing, photography, or learning to play guitar, it requires less formal experience or expertise, as opposed to medical sites, where it needs to have more authority and more citation. So again, if it's all subject to different industries, it can't be massage. It can't be optimized for, right? Indeed, I think that at uh, it's, it's putting into perspective uh, at, at the end of the day uh, when we have all this content, right? I, and you can hire copywriters for many, many, many topics, but realistically, the more complex or the, the, the more specialized a topic is and also connected with uh, the livelihood and, 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 and certain type of topics, it's, it's, it's also understandable that there will be additional criteria mm -hmm. and, and, and validations to be to be made uh, for accuracy and to to, to keep the safety of, of the user uh, going on, right? Absolutely. So yeah, indeed, and, like, this, and this is very interesting, right? Because for example, for my own website, I have a website that is remoters, right? A, a remote working website. Mm -hmm. And indeed, I, I hire uh, copywriters to to help me uh, develop the content for, for, for the website because of course there's only so, so much time that I have in, 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 uh, in a day. Uh, but realistically, I will never do that, on the other hand, for my SEO-related content because, of course, it's so much more complex. Right. Uh, it's something that I am actually knowledgeable, like super specialized about, and I want to share my own input. But, of course, uh, one, one is writing about SEO, and another is like tips to keep productivity going right. when traveling or on the go, things right. like that, right? Not all the content is the same. Not all the complexity and 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 the sensitivity of the content is is the same. And it's, that and that's a, that's that. a very good point because if you are actually in a specialized industry and you're rolling out content that you know is nowhere near how it should be from a level of expertise and authority, right? That should be actually a self-governing thing, right? Indeed, indeed. If you write about something because you have actually done it and you know a bit about this topic for sure. And, right. and of course, there are only so many experts or specialists or people with experience within certain fields right. too. Oh, yeah. Right, right, right. And, uh, you know, absolutely. So, I mean, there's a good deal of uh, other points here. Focusing on EAT is not a replacement for technical SEO auditing or any other SEO objective. Amen. Don't even go there. <laughs> EAT is not the new, neither is Google's fight for uh, fight against misinformation. Um, there was a good deal of banter about where Google is, is positioning itself, or observably so, in the trust factor, and what is authority, what's not, what's truth, what's not. That's not the factor. It's all about context around the industry itself. Google's actually looking at the citations of that particular industry, the expertise and the, and the niche type of authorities in that space. They're not sanctioning one body as, as opposed to the other, right? <laughs> yeah, indeed. No, at the end of the day, sorry, it, it, it should be about the, the, the context. Context is everything, and and, and uh, we cannot isolate one or the other as, as something unique or, or absolute, for sure. Absolutely. So, um, 
Read the other uh, key points here. Last point that she made is EAT is not something you can plaster on your site and expect immediate results. Addressing EAT takes time. I would, I would contend that EAT is probably the most difficult um, challenge for online marketing because you mm -hmm. literally have to get sanctioned by the industry that you're trying to affect. So this is a whole, outside of an SEO game, this is an entire marketing game. Uh, a PR execution, a, a, mm -hmm. a, I mean, a scientific journaling execution. This is a discipline that far uh, ranges far beyond what you could be even looking at from a rank potential, right? Yeah, indeed. How do you establish authority even within an industry? We were talking about that the other day, mm -hmm. about how uh, they were saying, oh, you establish authority and, and people invite you to do roundups, interviews, and, and, and getting links and citations become right. so much more easily. But of course, you need to have already certain name. You need to have a brand. You, you were probably, it, it is much easier when you are one of the first ones uh, within specific fields, right? For yeah. sure. And, and so there are so many factors and, and contexts that is, are taken into consideration to do that. But realistically, this is something that we cannot expect that happens all, only on page, on your website, only because you tweak your content in a certain way or you add a little bit of information an extra layer of whatever right. type of term you you know you don't achieve authority like that really and, and if we think about it it's not online not in real life like doesn't happen like that so much to do with your understanding your expertise how the 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 the, the, the referrals that you get the citations that you get mm -hmm. Everything matters. Yeah. Honestly, your legacy as as a business owner, as yeah. a as, as a contributor into the space, and not not brand nosing here, but I mean, perfect example of what you're doing inside of the international SEO concept is that you're one of the few champions talking about that and ex explaining how to do that. That establishes your authority, right? That's what you have to do, and that's hard work. You're all over the bloody place. But you know what, and, and this is a great, great uh, type of, of, of topic that you brought up, but for international SEO, for example, but for example, I was explaining also, and we were talking about that, how, for example, I wanted to be able to speak a little bit more about remote work, right? Because this, I have this website going on, but indeed, I am very well known to be an international SEO. I am not that well known yet uh, to be, uh, 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 to have a website that is about remote work and remote productivity, remote, right. etc. So I am, so... This is the thing. You can you have certain type of of, uh, of authoritative authoritativeness within certain areas mm -hmm. and, and 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 topics, and uh, it's something that indeed is is very tied to content that connected with certain with certain uh, type of topics, and you cannot very unlikely be an authority for everything and anything, no, no. or it's not an absolute metric in general, right? Absolutely. So, I mean, check out the entire article. This is it's a wealth of information, but it is a it's a myth buster. It really is because uh, SEOs get worked up about so many small things, but they also clamor on, "Hey, this is the silver bullet as soon as we do this." It's it, or come up with something as a rating or as a factor as to oversimplify something. Right. But if we think about it, at, at the end of the day, Google is trying to replicate the type of criteria that us human use right. to, to identify a good answer mm -hmm. for, for, for a question, right? So this is what they are trying to do at the end of the day. So it's about, yeah, we need to think about all of this like that. How does that fit with, right. with the final goal or outcome that Google has at the end? That's a good point. Is it, is it, they're trying to parallel how we, how we uh, evaluate in human life and be able to put those type of evaluations to. So there's no gamification, guys. It's hard work. In the in the eat space. So thanks to Lily for actually rolling that one out. Another article over by Barry, actually from from uh, uh, Search Engine Journal. This is over by uh, Matt Southern. Uh, good point here, uh, especially for, uh, regarding our international discussion today. Google expands shopping ads to over 50 new markets and adds new features. Uh, it's very cool. Uh, they actually have expanded their shopping ads and introducing new features to help advertisers target shoppers worldwide. Shopping ads are now available in over 50 new markets and 95, 95 markets in total. Uh, in order to take advantage of the great, greater availability, Google Ads is rolling out some additional following features, uh, multi-country feeds, 
The advertiser can reach more holiday shoppers around the world with a multi-country feed. This, these allow for easy targeting of multiple countries that share the same language. Uh, automated feeds. Retailers can actually create product feeds for more easy, with, more easily with, the, with a new automated feed feature. These allow Google merchants to crawl a website structured data to create a feed out of the, the product information. And that is fantastic uh, just to be able to pull that structured data and be able to create the feed because that was a challenge for the number of years be able to push that XML feed out of your own site. Now you've got structured data that you can rely on. Lastly, new Merchant Center experience. They've actually updated the entire additional insights, easier navigation, and more straightforward workflows. So uh, check out that article. It's great to be able to hear that news. Uh, Alita, uh, what do you think about uh, this new news of being able to get the ads into all these new countries? Oh my God. I have to say that our I am far more on the SEO side. Sure. So this, when I read this before, it was actually news to me too. And, um, and uh, I have, what, I, what I, I wish, I wish Google did all of this type of additional integration and support and facilitate things in an automated way, as it seems here for, for, for example, implement the structured data. Yeah, in, yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> if we could only hope, right? We could, we could only hope. <laughs> No, it's it's. Oh, it, well, I mean, well, of course, that's where the money is, right? Yeah, yeah, no, understandable. Yeah, it's understandable for sure. I was, I was, I won't say much else because in my backlash. Yeah, no, exactly, no. exactly. Okay. We'll just stay away from that. We'll move on. All right. So, in Google's favor, uh, last article from Barry Schwartz. Uh, uh, they just had a Google Webmasters conference, and Barry actually consolidated mm -hmm. uh, tips into five tips and trends from the Google Webmaster conference. Certainly, I appreciate Barry doing that. Uh, five tips mm -hmm. and trends that they actually took away took away from the event. Elena, did you actually attend that? No, I, I wasn't able because I was in Milan, oh, right? right? Otherwise, I was like, oh my God, this is... But you know what? To be fair, I have to say, I, Google has been doing an, a much more communication work, a direct type of validation yeah. with the community. I have, I, like, to be honest, like, especially after my last comment, I had to say that I am so appreciative of, of this um, additional efforts mm -hmm. that they have been doing, especially running this event. And also this is, I, I saw that they were doing this event um, to get also a little bit of feedback and a much more uh, maybe right. expert level, but they have been doing an amazing work also running this um, conferences and meet up in many locations where there are not usually conferences, search conferences going on for it. So for example, in India, yeah. in, in Southeast Asia, so that, that is amazing to see how they are clarifying the concepts of, of how search works and also to, to be able to confirm a few things that we all sort of, yeah, sort of knew, but, but to, to get that information directly for, from them is, is always appreciated and, and, and nice to have for sure. Absolutely. Uh, I was privileged to be able to witness one of the first of those efforts by Google. We went to the Google Dance in San Jose with SMX. I in, oh, what was that, 16 or 15? And there yeah. was a small pocket of SEOs that Google brought in into an inner, inner uh, sanctum uh, conference room, and it was every bloody SEO uh, celebrity in the, in the house. And it was, a, it, was a, it was a rant session, and it was a complaint session from SEOs. I've never seen anything like it. And to be able I, to... I, I don't know if I was at that one, but when I went to SMX West, uh, yeah, Few years, years ago or so, I yeah, yeah I was. I was there. Oh, you were there? Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I literally, I could <laughs> yeah. reach back and touch Matt Cuts right here. And that was probably uh, pretty creepy to even say. So we'll just move on. Uh, <laughs> so the five tips. Uh, Barry brings together uh, structured data over the years. Google has continued to roll out uh, new support for additional structured data markups and continues to expand support for additional rich results in search. And we certainly appreciate that. Uh, they went through uh, a number of new rich result types uh, uh, about the numerous options already officially supported. Some of these uh, some of these were actually enumerated here. So emo emoji search, did mm -hmm. you know you could actually, uh, it took Google over a year to add support for emojis in search. Uh, this includes the ability to crawl, index, and rank emojis. Ranking emojis, how about that? Uh, finally. <laughs> finally. <laughs> also, did you know that Google sees over 1 million searches per day with emojis in the search phrase? Isn't that Smiley face. 
<laughs> That's the best I can do. <laughs> um, all right, so deduplication tips. Uh, yeah, a million, a million emoji searches. What the heck is that? What are you, what are you trying to... I, yeah, what are you trying to find? I, I, didn't, I didn't know that there were that many emojis support, supported in general. <laughs> I'm trying to think what I would search for with them. Like, does someone just like literally like look up pizza emoji and get yeah. like, a phone number for pizza? Del- That's crazy. I've never. I'm gonna try that now. I guess. But what does the poo emoji bring you? I, well. <laughs> Just bring your crap. <laughs> All right, there we go. Uh, another point, deduplication tips. Uh, Google shared a numerous tips around how the search engine handles duplicate content and how webmasters can actually help conf- help figure out the canonical versions. These tips include use redirects, use meaningful HTTP uh, result codes, check your rel con- canonical links, use HR- href lang for localization, of course, um, report hijacking cases in the forums, secure dependencies for secure pages, and keep canonical signals unambiguous. They also went through some crawling tips. Uh, do not rely on caching rules. Google doesn't obey them. That's interesting. Um, Google minimizes its fetch, uh, so Google bot might not fetch everything that you think it is. Google checks your robot's text before crawling. 69% of the time, Google gets a 200 response code when trying to access your robots.txt. 5% it gets a 500, and 20% robots is just unreachable. That's that's wild. I like to see how that overlays with the existence of those re- re- robots text files across the across the digital planes. There, um, if Google can't reach robots that text due to a 500, Google won't crawl the site. So, for those of you who are wondering if you don't have a robots text file on your site, do that immediately, please. Uh, last thing they actually focused on was synonyms. Uh, search lead Paul Har had an interesting presentation around synonyms and how Google understands some queries. He actually went through a couple of examples that we won't give right here, but it was actually a really good uh, showing of Google. All right, sorry for the rant there, but Alita, uh, you're absolutely right, is that they're communicating so much. I mean, just think about those points yeah. of technicality right there. They've never been uh, that forthcoming on some of these, these, uh, these points of, of uh, uh, connection, right? Indeed, I, I actually, and, and there were things, certain things that I expected regarding more clarification, how, how they were handling um, crawling and, and rendering, especially with JavaScript frameworks, etc. But it really took my attention how they, they highlighted also the, the role and additional support that they give them for structured data mm-hmm. and how that also connects with, it is sort of also part of the future of, of, of search mm-hmm. with uh, the, the assistant to generate uh, answers uh, for the assistance mm. uh, without having to develop actions specifically for that. And they will be able to understand and, and, and pick up from the usage of structured data within mm. your own content. So I, I love the mix up all the topics, not only on the, the current most prominent type of issues, but also given a little bit of highlight on and, and, and how it, it is going to, to evolve and, and things that we should be paying our attention to for opportunities. Indeed. Absolutely, absolutely, and and uh, the 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 insight that they had regarding synonyms and also understanding uh, key concepts that Google's starting to begin begin to understand even more aligns so much with Bert and understanding tra- the, the trans the, the transistors the trans transformers. I'm sorry, the transformers yeah. of of linkage of of key concepts. It's all. It's all evolving, involving right in front of us. Is that Google is getting smarter? They're understanding the language and multiple languages on on with a greater degree than ever before. Go ahead. Indeed, it's, it's not a birth factor or trying to do something extra or or different, right? If you are already doing a good job to 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 optimize for your users and and yep. and make your content really relevant and and, and descriptive. Uh, it, it it helps to 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 see that Google has a has a much better support now and 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 understanding and um, and and on identifying the 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 meaning the actual meaning of, of many words because indeed especially in in a multilingual type of context there were this type of situations where you could see sometimes the results and I I don't know maybe it's because uh, for example in Spanish you use a lot. Of um, of prepositions mm-hmm. and and the wording is a little bit different than 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 in in English indeed and you could see a few times like completely different type of results huh. uh, that weren't necessarily the ones that will be connected 
with that type that type of, of term, right? So it's great to see like the additional understanding and, and support and 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 on this type of, of, of topics for Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. So so we we trash talk uh, Google Ads just a little bit, but uh, we certainly uh, are warming our hearts to uh, Google because of what they're doing with the SEOs and the webmaster. So keep it up, Google. All right. So <laughs> check out all the trending topics over at Edge of the Web Radio. Com. That's edge of the web radio.com. I uh, want to make sure that we give thanks to our uh, continued sponsor of the edge. That's ahrefs.com. That's ahrefs. Uh, make sure that uh, you check them out. You can truly get a good competitive analysis very easy. Their tools show you how competitors can actually uh, get their traffic and uh, why they're getting their traffic. So check out their pages. You can see their content that's sending the most traffic to your competitors. And guess what? You can reverse engineer and uh, be able to outgun them on a regular basis. You can actually find out the exact keywords they're ranking for and which bank link backlinks are actually helping them in that. So go over to ahrefs.com. That's A-H-R-E-F-S.com and sign up for a free trial today. You'll swim in great, great data, just like we do at our shop. All right. So with all that, let's uh, turn the channel here and let's talk to this week's featured guest. Now it's time for Edge of the Web featured interview with Elena Solis, international SEO consultant and founder at Orintu. All right, so uh, let's introduce our guest to our listeners. If you haven't caught uh, Alita in the past and, and on the on the speaking circuit, you really need to to uh, catch one of her one of her sessions. Alita Solis, she's an international SEL consultant and founder of Aranti. Uh, she's uh, her her service uh, is, is phenomenal. She's been providing SEO consultant services, international SEO consultation services for the last seven years, and she's been doing search engine optimization and for European American. American and Latin American companies having worked in as an in-house specialist as well as an agency consultant and an independent professional. Alita is also an experienced SEO speaker, like I'm talking about, uh, in the in international conferences. She's spoken in the best-known online marketing events worldwide, such as in the U.S., U.K., Spain, Germany, France, Italy, Chile, Israel, Belgium, among other countries. Uh, your frequent flyer, flyer mile package must be fantastic, Alita. I, I do get at this point already, thankfully, finally, after so much, right? Uh, extra upgrades. There we go. I cannot complain. I cannot complain. I get at this oh point. no, that's that's the perk right there. But you are you've been doing that. You've been on the speaking circuit for a very long time, and uh, you truly are are kind of acclaimed as the champion for international SEO. And it's a it's a, it's a, a clarion bell uh, for so many SEOs. And it's it, we we've been myopic in 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 the English language for such a long time. And for us working in the the international mm -hmm. international companies, uh, it's just been a an an unheated uh, concept for the longest time. So, I mean, you're doing a great job in that space. Why don't you give us your backstory of how you came into SEO? I started in SEO in 2007 when I started to work for an online marketing agency that uh, did a lot of, of, of uh, SEO as, as, as a service to their own clients, right? Mm -hmm. But also they had their own, their own website. So at the beginning, they hired me to run their own websites to monetize their websites to develop content optimize etc and this is how i learned at some point i started to work for their clients too and many of their clients were international targeted uh, and, and and based too so i ended up doing and entering uh, much more into seo within this type of international type of settings multilingual type of audiences and 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 ended up like focusing much more on it until yeah i i started after a while, after a few years, also to share my own experiences, to blog, to speak about it first, only in Spanish, and after a while, while also also in, in, in English, I think that I started to speak in at conferences in English in 2012 or okay. so. Yeah, so after and it has been quite a ride, I have to say. I never expected uh, that it was going to be so so good. So I I, I have been lucky to be able to share uh, my experiences in SEO and what I'm. What I learn at a continuous basis. Uh, this is how I see speaking, right? To, sh to give back, to share back, and also I, I speak a lot and go a lot to conferences because I am I am um, remote based, right? And and by going to conferences, this is how I keep up and yeah. and also connect with other people and share a little bit of of, of my concerns of what I found uh, useful or not or things mm -hmm. like that. So. 
I got a question for you. Um, and, and again, international SEO is is mm -hmm. um, is a new frontier for a lot of SEOs. Um, have you been seeing your effect uh, in the in the in the space of speaking and be able to convey uh, international SEO concepts? Have you been hearing from professionals that they're taking taking your advice, and have you been getting uh, feedback from those SEOs? Yes, I think that well, I, I get a, a lot of feedback saying, you know, I look for this topic and of course if there was an article about you talking about it, that means a lot and it's very, of course, it's mission accomplished, I'm yeah, yeah. very happy. Yep. Or, or whenever they run into a very weird scenario, I get an email, right? And I'm very happy to, to dig into it and, and, and take a look at it or tweets mm -hmm. about weird scenarios or coverage. So I think that more and more there has been this awareness that first, uh, there's a lot of potential uh, targeting international audiences and even within mm. the US markets because there are also so many speaker, uh, Spanish speakers nowadays. I, th I think it was like last year I have a couple of, a couple of very prominent companies and brands in, in the US to effectively make sure that they were correctly uh, configuring and, and, and localizing their content for right. Spanish speakers in, in the US. So I think that there's much more awareness and maturity too. I think it's, it's natural that after, especially like the companies that started doing SEO many more years ago, they, they reach a point, they, they, they realize that to grow, a very natural way to grow is to target global audiences, international audiences that they can serve pretty well. Absolutely. Uh, already at that point yeah yeah absolutely absolutely well uh if we if you don't mind let me take a quick moment if you're liking this show we certainly uh ask you as a listener to reach over to uh, youtube and and uh, subscribe and hit that bell so you can be alerted to great shows like this with different guests in the future there's a gratuitous plug for for the edge all right so uh, you had a great presentation over at X, uh, SMXL19. Uh, you just re recently, I mean, it, literally last week. Um, it was about SEO audits and the ma that maximize growth. Um, you tweeted, uh, just, just a quick note, you, you've been tweeting for a long time, but, but you're one of the actual SEOs that has such a great following, 70,000 followers and growing. So congrats to the hard work here. Um, quick yeah. note about SEO and the social media. Have you noticed that uh, the social chatter and engagement has grown over the last year? Yes, I think that there, there's much more, uh, there are many more conversations for sure. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and indeed, uh, I, I think that maybe because, I don't know, like, it's not that Twitter has become much more hotter necessarily, right. like, but yeah, ma many more, com you know what, realistically, I think that I know why, maybe I have an hypothesis, right? Huh. Before we had uh, comments on, on prominent blogs, the right. main SEO blogs, they had comments too, and there, there were many of the forums uh that existed right. but i think that comments are now gone mostly for most of the top blocks right so i think that 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 might be one of the reasons why they pushed more it up, was, pushed us out of the comments I, so now it's taken to twitter <laughs> indeed indeed <laughs> but yes you're, you're correct there there's much more about the the latest seo topics yep. or tip uh being shared over twitter directly and twitter threads also oh my gosh it's incredible yeah and, you, you know what it's it's, it's crazy. I, I am part of this very crazy Twitter thread that is called the Mega Thread. <laughs> we even created a shirt. There was a shirt being created, and we all donated. I donated a bit to create the Mega Thread. And this is this this is not. It's the 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 the, the people who are in this thread are fifty people. That I think is the maximum allowed okay. for a thread in how, Twitter. How long and has this been going on? Since years. And and this is the thing. <laughs> There are certain SEO news that are related that are shared within the thread, but most of it, these are wing shots that we like every time that anybody on the thread like travels somewhere. It's like wing shot to the mega thread and also to John Mayer's because he's he he loves wing shots and then random conversations about any topic. Anyway, I wow. yeah, it, Funny because yes, there are so many chicha. It's fun, I have to say. It's, it is, great. and and it. it's almost like uh, SEOs reared up their heads and go, "Hey, there's actually social media. We can talk in that space." So mm -hmm. it's, it's it's been really exciting to be able to see that. All right, let's get back to the show. <laughs> Sorry, um, <laughs> right. SEO audits. Now, uh, I mean, you certainly yeah. are a, a proficient SEO auditor. Um, 
We certainly value your insight into this, and we want to touch on, touch on some of the key points that you covered mm -hmm. in that. Regarding the tools that can be used, the technical, con technical analysis, content analysis, link popularity, you went through the gamut, and it looked literally like a top-shelf wet bar, to be honest with you. <laughs> if you actually have a look at some of these, uh, let me pull up uh, 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 page four there, if you could, Jacob. Um, Literally off of uh, the deck, and we're going to have links to this slide deck as well. Uh, for crawling, you had right, uh, Botify, uh, on crawl, Screaming Frog, Sight Bulb, Deep Crawl, SEO Lizer, Fandango SEO. I've never come across that. Uh, and GSC for content quality. You had all those plus safe, safe cont, uh, link popularity, uh, all the top names, Ahrefs, uh, uh, Cognitive SEO, SEM Rush, Majestic Moz, and GSC for rankings. SEO, Mo SEO Monitor, SEM Rush, Systrix, Right, GSC and GA, Audience and Comparison and com com Competition Analysis, Systrix, SEM Rush, Ahrefs, Cognitive. Holy cow! Pick your favorites ever out of that bunch. I have to say that I forgot now that I am realizing, oh my God, I'm so bad at this, that I should have added like an extra layer or extra layer of reporting. Yeah. Oh uh, Google my gosh. Studio, yeah. Google that studio for, for that. And then for continuous monitoring, there are a couple of great services that I use, uh, um, Little Warden and Content King huh. to be alerted whenever something happens to specific configurations that you have within your website that this, this uh, tools will be proactively uh, monitoring your robot CXT, your canonical text configurations. If 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 Azure Flag annotations were changed in specific areas of of of, of your mm -hmm. of, of your site, uh, all that can be monitored, huh? Yeah. Wow. Okay, I think I cut you off on the first reporting tool that you were referencing. Go ahead and tell me that again. Uh, Google Data Studio. You, you mean? Yep, absolutely. I, absolutely. Yeah. Just want to make sure that everybody heard that on the show. All right, so we went through a huge amount of, of great tools there. And do you have a favorite in that bunch? Uh, of it's, course it's, you don't. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. It depends on for, for, what, uh, for what goal. But I have to say that I have been playing much more and using much more lately a couple of them, um, right? Mm-hmm because of their their integration with uh, Google Search Console. And, and, and they they have built all of these additional layers and, and reporting to better understand in a much more rational way the, the, the data from Google Search Console. Directly you see which are the type of, uh, which are the pages that are very likely suffering from content cannibalization issues because mm. there, are, there are many pages uh, ranking for the same type of, of, of mm. top terms. Uh, which are the top, the, the new key, keywords for which you have started to rank in the last week mm -hmm. or the last day, the, the ones that you have lost more uh, keywords. You see in a single page, the the keyword along the page around the rankings all aggregated together. So it's, it's, it's great from, from an analysis perspective, it facilitates so much. And then of course, they, they have also a powerful crawler mm -hmm. that allows you to play and integrate Google Search Console and, and Google Analytics data. So for example, if you're uh, analyzing and validating content that for example has um, uh, con thin content issues or content duplication issues, you can see right away if uh, these pages are self-canonicalized or, or, or indexable, right. or if, 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 if they have uh, thin content issues, if they are also um, sharing the content or they have content duplication with which other pages and the type of traffic that they are attracting specifically. Wow. And they are also targeting or ranking any keywords uh, that is being informed in the Google search console. So you can see right away there for which keyword it is. So it, it makes it so easy to decide, yes, I should start um, just no indexing or, or even redirecting or, right. or, or consolidating these pages or no, it is worthy for me to start um, optimizing the content much further and improving it and for this keyword directly. So huh. all, all the data aggregated in a single way, it makes your the decision making process much more easily. All right. Um, she sold me. I have to go over to right and just uh, download that immediately. All right. <laughs> oh my gosh, so many tools, so little time. All right. So uh, your presentation went in depth in a number of, di number of different uh, spaces. And we can't ask you to cover them all, but we will go through some hidden gems that were maybe often overlooked. So when it gets down to um, some of the things that should be 
be executed from a crawling standpoint, you actually referenced, and he didn't go through all the checklists, but you referenced some facet and filter and pagination issues that you should be able to be paying ten attention to. Structured data configuration, international com configuration, obviously, and AMP configuration. These are some of the things that, that a regular crawler indexing mm -hmm. uh, audit's not going to really share, but they are critical whenever we're talk talking about technical SEO analysis and especially the pagination. Pagination just gets lost along the way. Um, so, so, give us some of your your key thoughts of of gems in technical SEO that uh, get brought out of some of these uh, these uh, technical SEO audits. So yeah, the realistic to do is the thing, right? It all depends on the type of website and the size of website, the maturity yeah. um, of where the the website is. Uh, if if it has done many more. Uh, SEO processes in the past, well, the, the context matter for sure. Right. So if it is a small website that, uh, yeah, indeed, they, they are just starting an SEO process, potentially uh, trying to optimize the, the, the pagination or crawl budget or, or etc. It won't make much more sense. And this was the whole point of the of that presentation, right? Mm -hmm. How do you focus on make it on, on making your 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 audit much more cost effective, much more efficient, to, instead of just seeing as as going through a, a, a checklist that right. you need to check. Right. So, for example, for bigger website, more complex website, I work a lot with with uh, marketplaces. Mm -hmm. The typical type of, of of issues is is indeed. Up to which point do they need to paginate or show content in a single page because they have so much information? Or how do you, which are the rules that you should set to be able to differentiate enough the, the information within different type of facets mm -hmm. that are worthy to index? And, and instead of having like rule of thumb type of rules, like everything after this level of category or this level of, of organization, or, or filtering, it's going to be no index or it's going to be canonicalized to the foreign category to develop more, um, more, more sophisticated uh, type of validation and rules right. within the system to, to also validate, okay, it's not only about the, the offering, but also about supply and demand. Is there enough that demand that we could be targeting with these pages? So it's about integrating what uh, the API of, of, of keyword tools to verify if there's enough search volume that could be targeted by these pages. Uh, so there's enough demand that will make worthy to optimize the, the supply. So how do we differentiate the, the products that we are offering in this page? Uh, to So it is it is, connects in a much better way with, right. the, with, the, with, the, with the type of query, with the type of need of, of the specific user for this product, and then on the other hand, that allows also the, the the website to differentiate the content with another very similar that might be similar type of, of category or subcategory or layer that they might have on the website, right? So it's important to to have all of this input and validation and data to give much more context on how to better real optimize um, for a specific type of scenario, different type of scenarios with. With, with not necessarily rule of thumb, but the, the, there are so many ifs and conditions to, to, to fulfill, right? All right, so I'm going to pull you back here because you actually gave a great example of how to use that audit. But the, the fact of the matter is, is that you've got um, so many points of technical analysis that you can go through that you can get into what we call analysis paralysis. Um, the fact of the matter is your, your presentation was really focused on how do you use the SEO audit report, not how do you generate it, right? And, and that's really the key factor is that, is that SEOs that just crank out a 160-page document that go, covers every bloody thing under the sun, over here, over here, over here, over here, literally, that's great from an academic standpoint, but it is completely impractical to get into mm -hmm. actual execution. So. You started this entire presentation with making your analysis strategically based, and we love that concept. What's the unique selling proposition? What's the business model and the goals? What's the previous SEO results and the challenges that you experience? What are the platform restrictions? Absolutely. And what are the industry challenges and requirements? Honestly, before an SEO execution or an audit ever gets through, you need to answer those questions, right? Indeed, indeed, to to make your audits much much more meaningful and 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 really connected with the reality of of the website and the business as a whole, right. realistically, right? And and this is the the thing. Like we need to 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 realize that 
what we should be looking as an outcome of our SEO that is indeed not to deliver uh, a document to the client, right. but also to, to make our recommendations happen, to make our recommendations easy to be executed and that they are executed so the, the, the client can see an actual result because of our analysis, right? That they, 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 they deliver the, the type of, of, uh, of SEO goals that they are trying to, to achieve, which is not, yeah, to get a document from us, but realistically it's to see their traffic yeah, growth. It doesn't as matter. As I mean, it's just going to pick up dust unless there's an actual action plan from it. And what's unique about your presentation, it actually um, got further than just understanding the audit. It actually got further than actually action plan plans. It actually got into how you how you uh, reinforce this, how you get this validated into the entire uh, uh, resource system. But before we get there, you you brought a number of things to avoid uh, out of your presentation uh, whenever you're doing a an SEO audit. One of them is just not uh, taking too long to analyze bloody everything that's that uh, could be possibly wrong uh, in an SEO audit. And uh, uh, you, you went through a number of different ways to analyze prioritization of issues and uh if i if i could just give me give me a brief concept on 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 what those issues are uh and how you should actually go through the prioritization and the and, and how to create also efficiency in targeting certain key seo issues yeah so this is the thing right based on what we discussed before mm -hmm. that not all websites are the same and not all websites need the same so for example if i will be investing my time on on trying to optimize the crawl budget for example the the crawl efficiency of of, of a smaller website it may not necessarily make up such a big impact right maybe these type of websites that are new mm -hmm. they don't necessarily need to be trying to sort out uh, the the indexing or, or, or callability of every single page, but actually to to better improve their content, to establish better their authority and by by understanding uh, the, the, there's a, a, a link profile gap versus their their competitor if right. they have only a couple of years in the market. So again, it depends on the context of the website. If it is a big brand, if it's a small brand, if it is international, if it is local, mm -hmm. um, and and. So all this input that we need to take from the client when and 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 context and 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 information that we we need to we can take as an input the better because it will be it will, it will make our work more efficient also to, to to be doing an audit for example to give an additional support when when a web migration is coming or a design is coming it's completely different than a, oh, a yeah. an SEO audit for an ongoing SEO process on an overall SEO process again so all of this will change. So based on that, I will say that um, it's important to, to, to focus on, on identifying which are the areas uh, within SEO that will be rather much more meaningful at, at that stage, right? And it doesn't mean that you won't add structured data at some point, but if you if you start crawling and verify that they are like super consistent and, and middle, meaningful uh, canonicalization issues and and maybe half of the website is is blocked entirely or it cannot be rendered entirely because it's it's relying on 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 um, on, on client side uh, JavaScript rendering that right. is not even showing the, the 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 links with href tags but relying completely on JavaScript so depending on the type of criticality of the issues that you start finding you say Yes, structured mm -hmm. data will be will be nice to have, but not so critical as this or the aspect. Or if you see that the 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 the, the crawl, crawler cannot even render all of the your pages right. because it, it stops at, after a while because they take so much to 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 load. So that, of course, at that point, speed is going to be a priority. So it's important that when you start validating those areas that based on the context of the website will tend to, to be much more, much more important. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important to take into consideration the current optimization status, the, how critical is that area to achieve the final results that we want to get. And based on that, on the, on the, on, on the current status or how optimized it is, on, on the potential and criticality that that area has. And also, also take into consideration the effort that the website needs, the owner, the resources that need to put uh, to be put to, to, to make that happen. We need to balance all that to really prioritize those specific actions that will pay off much more easily, much more quickly, that will be much more meaningful to tackle right. in the first three months, in the first 
iteration of the process because again, SEO is an ongoing process that is iterative, that is a, a incremental, that, so we cannot expect to release a to-do list of 100 items. Half of them are really like nice to have, not necessarily critical to have, right? Well, yeah, that's, the, point, the, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing is that the SEO auditor could literally can kind of uh, go into the annals and the depths of all the possible checklists. But again, it's almost, uh, it's almost, obviously people are going to glaze over if you're looking at every one of those different points with the same level of, of criticality. So your, your point of the entire presentation is the goal of the audit is to be the source and driver of the SEO process to achieve growth. That means that it can't just sit in its own space as, as an audit. And this is what was really interesting to me. You actually have to go through and feature the examples of those key critical, those key priority things that you've identified. So you have the goals and an understanding of the challenges. You also have the audit and also have the prioritization and the criticality of certain things. And now you're actually in those select, that selection stage of, of what to fix. And you're also saying how to fix it in the audit. So the audit has actually grown into almost a how-to, an instruction list for those resources and understanding how you're going to test it and validate that it has actually been resolved. So this is no longer a, an audit anymore. This is more of a project management resource, right? Indeed, because they all connect together. This is the thing, since, since the real outcome of the audit that we want is that to make those recommendations happen, we need to make sure that our audit is as easier to follow as possible. It's right. organized in a way that anybody within the organization will understand, even if there are no uh, necessarily that knowledgeable in SEO, they, we can show them with easy, easy screen, screenshots that these pages are showing these errors mm -hmm. and, and take a look at how much traffic they could be getting oh, and yeah, how yeah, many pages yeah. are ranking with these same pages that they are. Absolutely. That and that was the other shoe to fall was show how those in the, how the issues are impacted by those changes. So you integrate, like you're talking about, integrate rankings, integrate uh, competitive analysis uh, and search potential. So, I mean, again, I'm just looking at these different stages, understanding mm -hmm. all this, but also connecting to those resources and showing how their efforts are actually going to impact. That's all lost in a, in a technical audit. It never, never has context of what it's going to actually do for, for your domain. So indeed, instead of wasting time or investing time into aspects that are very just nice to have mm -hmm. uh, and won't necessarily move the, the, the needle of, of, of the traffic website, it's far better, for I, I believe, to invest your time to, for example, if we see that the website has huge canonicalization issues, to go through the different scenarios to make it as easy as possible for the developer to really understand what is happening from where these pages are being linked, uh, where they are going and where they should go instead. And right. we show this is how it has been done right now. This is how it should look instead in every single scenario that is actually meaningful instead of wasting our time to, yeah, validating this and, I don't know, <laughs> uh, privacy policy pages are really not meant necessarily to be ranked, but the actual meaningful pages from a business perspective, for example. So everything is connected as 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 as, as we can it see is. right and it's important also to facilitate that is very easily um consumed right so my point also was how do you format your router to to make it easy to be read right so start with those uh recommendations or actions are much more critical as the start and instead of focusing on on, on the problems every every finding every problem should have an action that drives to a solution. Right. Focus on the solutions and the opportunities instead. The wording here matters, I believe. Also to not get into any confrontations with, with, the, with, the, with the team, the stakeholders that are also <laughs> responsible for many of this too. That, that is also important and gain their support too. Uh, 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 so uh, you're already in that space where you beat me to it is is literally uh, isolating the resources, uh, getting the resource buy in, um, especially the stakeholders, the, the decision maker of sanctioning those efforts or that budget. You also put forth a recommendation matrix uh, that's <laughs> but going boiling down priorities as well as execution mm -hmm. difficulty. So you can actually see what's critical, what's a priority. And on top of that, you're also tying in. Uh, the, the, the search data, the potential conversion data, if they were to change this, all of a sudden that bell rings for the decision maker, the CMO, the CEO saying, oh, wow, 
You know, you're literally saying if we actually invest this yeah. much effort, we're going to be able to unfetter this, the, these type of conversions. Um, you're painting the entire holistic picture, and for the most part, so many SEOs just move that SEO audit of a checklist and has doesn't connect the dots and the impact that it's going to have in the organization it, all the it, way to the bottom line. It should, and in a very natural way, right? Because if you see what I what I presented there, um, what I'm proposing is that those priorities and efforts and and criticalities that you will be showing for each one of your recommendations. Mm -hmm. Put that together as a summary that you can use as an index at the beginning of the document to make it easier for, for the stakeholders to go through your document. It can serve as an index. And then you can use this same metric, this same table, uh, when you're sharing the outcome of the, of the, of the analysis right. to assess which of, of these recommendations are actually doable at the moment, how, if, if, if your prioritization, ideal prioritization can be actually followed and uh, based on the available resources and, 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 um, and flexibility with, with a, from a technical perspective, content perspective, et cetera, et cetera, decision making, business related type of, of, of actions. Right. For example, maybe the client say, okay, I understand that you need to implement this redirects here for this particular pages, but we are about to do a migration in, in a week and uh, in, in a week and a half or in, in a month. So it doesn't make sense to do this right now because we need to, 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 to better way to make it in a, uh, to, to make it much more consistent and, and, and get that done in the final type of, of configuration that you will have. So based on that, you can also reprioritize and validate with your clients that which are the feasible recommendation based on that end up having like a final risk of, of, of actions and tie those in also what the needed resources and verify that there will be um, allocated resources for each one of them and the expectant time times that they will be recommended so you can even use the same document to follow up later in and see exactly if, if the actions are being implemented as expected and and if not again this is super important for me if not you can very easily tell it, look, this is not being implemented as we agreed. So sorry, but yeah. we cannot achieve the results that you expected also. All this right. is super important <laughs> as a typical issue with SEO, right? You you want it all, you expect it all, but right. if you don't implement, sorry, but you cannot you cannot expect to achieve it, yeah, right? Exactly. So that's the final the final hammer right there is you use this documentation as a validation of what's been done, what's not been done. All of a sudden those resources realize that that SEO document has a bit of teeth to it too because you are completely instructing on how to execute what particular line of code or what particular uh, point in the DOM that you have to be be changing. And, and all of a sudden um, now you know that they well, you know <laughs> that you can also verify that as well so there's a there's a much larger context of what we're talking about than just an seo audit this is a project management document uh it's a validation pro and a process document and it also is a a verification of execution and that's also a level of accountability for the resource but it also clearly communicates to the c-level individuals that you did your job and mm -hmm. you isolated everything and what happened could very well be down the chain of, uh, down the line of execution because you're clearly uh, uh, demonstrating exactly how to do it so you're actually removing a lot of the impediments that we as SEOs uh, experience on a lot of times because it's clear as a bell to us and if we don't communicate it and don't actually walk through the process of how to fix it then you're relying on somebody else's contextual knowledge, somebody else's skill set, and somebody else's own prioritization of their efforts as opposed to your efforts. That's indeed. the entire scheme of this thing, right? Indeed. So actually, you 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 cover a point. Uh, you mentioned a point that is super important here. That is um, also the what we want to achieve at the end of the day, right? That is like the actual execution of the of the of the recommendations to achieve results and see success in our SEO processes. And it is funny because a few months ago, um, in actually yes, it was in September, a couple of months ago, mm -hmm. I, I actually gave this this presentation at Brighton SEO regarding why SEO failed. And it's because I did this poll over over well, over Twitter, I requested a lot of people also uh, in whatever type of platform I was in, and I got a, a little more than 500 answers of why 
why uh, uh, SEOs, SEO specialists, see as the main top three reasons that their processes fail, right? And this was very interesting to me to see that it was not necessarily because of the complexity of the analysis or the latest, um, I don't know, uh, tech or buzz or whatever, but it was mainly because of the lack of um, implementation mm -hmm. and, 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 and resources and flexibility that will support the recommendations that yeah. to, to for the recommendations to be executed right and and i and i share a few ways to handle this uh, in that presentation and this is the thing i with the audit making it far more easier to be understandable and to connect better with with the with the different stakeholders mm -hmm. to gain better their support that is the, certainly a way there is also a very important aspect that i don't think that we talk much about it that is during the sales process of the S of, of SEO, right? Like we need to validate and verify well that, well, there is an actual fit for the <laughs> client too. Because one thing is like, I want a SEO, but then you realize that it has zero technical resources, has right. zero technical understanding, and also not willing the willingness or, or even abil ability to, to put any effort on it at, at this point, right? Or, or content resources or etc cetera, etc cetera, right so it's yep. important that there's a feed and understanding and willingness to wait also to see results right so it's, it's wow. a good alignment and, and good position what what client is is everything <laughs> and, and and by validating well it, it it's it, it's all what matter at the beginning right to to make to make to minimize you there will always be instances of course of issues later on right but at least you minimize the the much more evident and obvious ones right and there's a thing a lot of seos that i have mentioned this like after the, my presentation the came was like and there's there is a point also tackling that and and, and the presentation saying unfortunately i'm not the decision maker and i have an agency and and they need to reach goals with clients, right. right? That is why I think it is important to not necessarily look into a volume of clients, but quality clients. I, 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 I say this and I repeat it every time for me. Sometimes I prefer to tell clients and be very honest. Like I prefer not to start on SEO process with you and to wait or better go to pay search specialists and until you are ready, really <laughs> ready to have an SEO process because otherwise, unfortunately, it will be bad. It will be even worse because I, I, I can see that it will be very difficult to achieve any type of results and they will blame me, right? So I prefer to be honest at the beginning and, and uh, advise the best possible way like this, right? All right so and focus uh, on those clients. Alita, uh, you know roller coasters, right? And you know amusement, par amusement parks, right? All right, so check this out. Yeah, is that what you're is. talking about? Is whenever you whenever you come up to the roller coaster and the guy at the at the ticket uh, at the uh, at the counter saying, "No, you're not big enough to ride this ride." That's literally what you're telling the clients <laughs> is that no, come back whenever you grow up a bit, a bit so you can actually handle the roller coasters ups and downs because that is absolutely what SEO is, and it's got to be able yeah. to fit the temperament of the client. So. My gosh, I mean, that, we've discovered it right there is that you just have to have a metri meter stick and be able to make sure that you can measure that client up because it's ultimately just going to turn into a bad scenario if they're not patient enough or they don't know what you're talking about or they don't have those resources available. Wow. Indeed, 100%. And then there's this other part after the, the, the recommendations, right? It's how it connects, how you gain later on the support from all of the areas mm -hmm. and this where SEO becomes really really tricky right because some part of our work has to do with developers some part of our work with the copywriters another part of our work if, if the marketing efforts and PR efforts and outreach effort that if these are bigger companies are, are likely already exist within right. all the areas of marketing right it's not only supported or for SEO. So our work there is to how do we align with all of ex these existing teams that have their own goals, have their own purpose on their own, but they will need to also support us. Oh, but but time. come on, I mean, we're all SEOs, we're introverts and we're left brain and we don't want to talk to anybody else. We just look, want to preen over our data. You're forcing us into a very uncomfortable scenario, Alita. But 
this is what is required for Genoslay, <laughs> especially a bigger organization, right? If, if it is a little WordPress website that we will be doing everything ourselves, it's much easier. Right. But realistically, the much more meaningful projects and where most of the profit and money is, is in this bigger type of scenarios and more challenges, indeed, in the more yeah. complex type of organizations. But yeah. Needed. It is important to 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 tackle it and and to develop yourself a little bit of more this this communication skills, right? Yeah, you got to be prepared for that. And you, and 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 because SEO yeah. is is a huge factor of unknown, you have to be able to translate it and also be able to kind of horse whisper into the different stakeholders what they need to know. And on top of that, uh, be able to give them affirmation data whenever that execution goes through, they can see their own results. And this is what we were talking about before air, is that mm -hmm. as soon as you actually see an SEO iteration go through and those stakeholders see their efforts actually come to fruition, now you're going to be able to see that the next iteration is going to go a heck of a lot quicker and, and more seamless yeah. because you've got them bought into the process. That is why sometimes testing is needed, pilot projects, like if, if, even if we don't have a full type of, of, of buy-in or, or support to deploy a right. change to the whole website, at least to be able to, to, to negotiate and, and, and earn uh, a little bit of resources and time to show that it, it does work well in those areas where you are allowed to, to, to make the, the, the implementations happen, for example. And then on the other hand, when you are communicating the 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 challenges the problems the opportunities to also uh do it do it in a way that you know that will actually connect with the with the with the right. person that you are talking with if, if you are talking with the with the cmo or, or the ceo you, you won't be talking about the yeah the technical type of issues you will be talking about <laughs> this the money that that you are losing because you are not yeah showing this this content well in the top positions and connecting with your clients type of actual needs and um, it's like this it's, it's money and then but you're, if you're talking with the development team it will it will tend to be different you won't be talking about money but more about look this is generating all of this extra um, um, crawlability problems crawlability uh, issues at, at much more type of of, uh, of um, of problems with, with, with hosting, with speed, etc. Right. So you, you discuss at every level and with specific metrics that will actually matter to to the different type of stakeholders that you will have in the in the team, indeed. Well, we can't do everything, though. I mean, come on. Uh, I mean, we know that SEOs will do rule the world, the digital world, but we can't let them know that. All right. Uh, your your final point was actually very very clarifying simplifying and prioritizing the to do list uh, of the of the SEO ex audit execution you need to do that without overwhelming the stakeholders and that's that's that, that's the clear hearkening bell here uh, is that out of everything that you're doing you've got to be able to tell them how to do it don't over the, overwhelm them with so much. I mean, as an SEO, you live and breathe. You love to see the data. You love to see the analysis. Mm -hmm. But it's got to work its way into the hands of somebody that's actually going to work on this and buy this, into it. 100%, because me, maybe we are super proud of the 200 pages that we are Absolutely. delivering. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Take a look at this. It's amazing. But realistically, to the, to the people who are going to... You need to go through it and actually implement it. It's like, oh, where do I begin? What Why did you this? do this to me? <laughs> I have all these things run. Are you for real? What yep. I, yes, yes, indeed. <laughs> Much all more right. empathic. Uh, okay, well, uh, before we finish up here, I do want to make a, a quick uh, plug for our newsletter. If you're interested in what we're talking about on our shows regularly, who we're talking about, uh, who we're talking to, not about, we don't we don't talk about them after the show, uh, go over to uh, edge, uh, edgeofthewebradio.com and sign up for the newsletter right there. You can also text to the word 228, to the, text to the number 22828, the word edge talk. You can sign up right there. We have all the recent information of the interview, who we're going to be talking to next, as well as the key news items of of this show. All right. So uh, turning this back around, Alita, we certainly appreciate your time and your, 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 certainly your insight into this. Uh, last couple of questions we always ask our audience, our, our guests, um, what bugs you about your industry right now? Oh, what bugs me? Well, you know what? I, I actually think that, that uh, we talked about that about people trying to oversimplify or make everything, or make whatever is mentioned as a potential score. Right. Or, or ranking factor, right? Like the bird score, or the eight score, this type of thing. Uh, trying to also chase 
the, this type of, of latest right. algorithm or come up with something that to other obsess. So seeing at the at the at the leaves instead of seeing the the whole the whole the whole trees as as a whole as a part of the context of something bigger to achieve results. So maybe this is something that tends to bug me a little bit indeed. Well, hopefully, hopefully um, we're we are witnessing a bit of a, a sloughing off of the old. It's almost like ambulance chasing, if you're familiar with that concept. Is mm -hmm. constantly chasing after that next dog, chasing after that ambulance. I mean, literally, uh, SEOs have to have that context, and I think we're actually growing uh, much more cognizant of language, of intent, of of the buyer's journey and how that applies to uh, the different steps of, that SEO can actually uh, interact with that consumer. So uh, I think we're actually kind of growing up a little bit, but eh. <laughs> uh, it, it is, it, I mean, it is, it's very funny whenever you see an algorithm drop and it, it has an acronym to it, right? All of a sudden you've got 1500 pages of how to optimize towards that. And it's just old people stop doing that type of content. All right. Conversely, what excites you about your industry right now? Well, I, I, I am really excited to see, uh, speaking about uh, groups, uh, speaking about also a lot of, 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 of uh, more people, new people, uh, more activity over Twitter. I, 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 I love to see a lot of efforts uh, put in recently to give uh, women in SEO uh, much more visibility mm -hmm. and prominence and support between each other. There is this great uh, group that was uh, de developed by Arish. Uh, she's a technical SEO in, in London. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, she created the, this group that is called Women in Tech SEO. And she's doing a conference next year too. And it's amazing because it, it, it's supporting women and giving more, well, uh, a network for, for women to support each other and to, ch to share and incentivize each other also to to get out there professionally and oh, also to be really more, more to to speak and share our work so i think that that is amazing and, and i love that hey um what can we actually promote for you right now well i i am still um promoting a bit uh, my youtube channel that is called crawling mondays mm -hmm. i started this year with this as a challenge right to to sort out and validate how youtube uh, optimization worked um and yes i did actually a presentation about that topic with the outcomes um um a month ago or so at some events in, in berlin anyway i i i I did a few, I don't know, 20 something episodes still at the beginning of the year. Right. I took a little bit of a, of a, um, of a break uh, in, in, in summer, but then I, I am retaking it uh, in a couple of weeks again with many more topics. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see the new episodes that will be very actionable and hopefully insightful also for, about the latest and in, in technical international uh, SEO too. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, we certainly want our listeners to track you. Well, before anything else, give us one final thought about about technical uh, technical SEO and and rolling out an SEO audit. Uh, give us one brief thought about that that uh, that digital marketer that's trying to get the attention of that C level of a thing that needs to happen. Go. Yeah, I I think it. it there's one each issue a, a thing that I, I will say that really bugs decision makers, uh, even if they don't understand the technical side of it, is show your competitor doing it right. right. Show if you can go to a tool like Sebrush or Systrix or whatever tool, even if you don't have, of course, their data, and you show how your competitor is outranking you for this very important keyword that you know that will be, and they also can provide the traffic, a reference of the traffic data that they, they are getting with it and show how they are ranking in the first position and how you are in position 20 something or 30 something and you have zero traffic and they are like, they have the 200,000 visits per month. That makes all the change. And then show, of course, how they have, how they have three times as much content as, as you are, how they have even the metadata correctly implemented, you are not. So, Try to connect that with the point that you're trying to to make and show how they are making much more money and, and traffic and conversions and, and you are missing out just because of this. So just basically uh, sh uh, scare them to death. 
Is that just FOMO and then you'll get your way. I get it. I get it. All right. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> All right. So if you want to follow Alita Solis, uh, uh, our Twitter handle is Alita, L-A-L-E-Y-D-A. Over Facebook, it's Alita, uh, Alita SEO Tips. On uh, LinkedIn, it's uh, Alita. And uh, no Instagram. Uh, do you have an Instagram? I, I have an Instagram, but it's well, my personal Instagram uh, no is private. But then, uh, but then I have uh, the Crawling Mondays one. Got it. You All right. So check over there. So, uh, Leah, thanks so much for being a second time guest and certainly appreciate unpacking this, this, this information. It was a deep dive into SEO audits of how to not, to not only to create that content, those action items, but also ensure that they actually get done. Mm -hmm. There's a heck of a lot to actually getting the entire SEO audit embraced. And we really appreciate you you're taking time with us to, to go down that merry way. So thank you so much for your time today. Thank you for the opportunity. It was very fun. You're more than welcome. All right. Hey, please don't forget to like and subscribe to Edge of the Web on YouTube. And if you're really feeling up to it, drop us a quick review on iTunes as well. We certainly appreciate the feedback. Be sure to check out all the must-see videos over at edgeofthewebradio.com. That's edgeofthewebradio.com. We'll talk to you next week. Do not be a piece of cypher driftwood. Bye-bye.